The Labour Department moving to clamp down on questionable labour practices. Our top story in the Barbados Today afternoon news for Wednesday, November 22nd. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. The Labour Department says it will not tolerate any practices that do not conform to the local labour laws. The warning from Acting Chief Labour Officer Victor Felix at the opening of a one-day labour management relations seminar this morning. He says this is one of the areas the department is keen on stamping out and encouraged officials to report on suspected cases of forced labour. These fundamental rights require, first of all, that persons are engaged in, in their labour freely. So there's no, no forced, forced labour. And sometimes we think that in Barbados there is not... Um, that particular challenge with forced labor, but we know or we are aware of the emergence of what the what um, the thinkers call modern day slavery, where persons are misled into believe maybe traveling to Barbados, believe that they they have a job, a legitimate job, offering in Barbados, and when they turn up, when they when they are coerced or encouraged to, to turn to come to Barbados, then they realize that the work is something other than what they have intended. So we will want to do all in our power to, to move away and ensure that these kind, those kind of things do not happen in our jurisdiction and where we have any sense that there might be occurring that we draw, draw it to the attention of the authorities. Today's seminar forms part of the department's education efforts on labor standards and practices. Participants will examine various aspects of some of the labor laws as they discuss challenges and potential solutions. Parliamentarians are hailing yesterday's passage of the Road Traffic Amendment Bill, but one MP says it does not go far enough to cater to the disabled. MP for St. James North, Edmund Hinkson, told the lower house that the proposed $500 fine for motorists who park in spaces reserved for disabled people was a joke and he argued that the bill is flawed and said the penalty should be at least a thousand dollars. Hinkson also took issue with the provision for random drug and alcohol testing of PSV drivers. He said the new legislation could potentially criminalize some some innocent people. We are seeking to now bring a new class of criminals into our system where someone, for instance, fails to give a breath analyzing test because he feels that it is not reasonable to ask him to do that. He's not committed any offense. There has been no road traffic accident. No one has been injured. But yet what we have before Parliament here today seeks now to bring a new class of criminals into the system of Barbados by fining, by sorry, in fact, the possibility of imprisoning such an individual. We should be seeking to remove offenses. The Barbados Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation today launched its crop value chain services as part of moves to enhance the agriculture sector. The corporation introduced its pack house, the farm shop annex and cassava cultivation equipment at Ferry Valley as part of a series of activities to showcase new agriculture products and services. The week of activities is being held under the theme Farm Gate to Plate, a celebration of sectoral progress. This is regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. 
Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. And the international community has pledged more than $2 billion in loans and debt relief to hurricane-ravaged Caribbean countries. The pledges were made at the CARICOM United Nations High-Level Pledging Conference, dubbed Building a More Climate-Resilient Community, which was held in New York yesterday. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton addressed the conference, and he urged the international community to assist the region in their developmental needs. St. Lucia records a significant drop in unemployment levels. The latest figures from the Statistics Department show that the jobless rate slowed in the third quarter of this year. We get more from HDS News Sports. Unemployment averaged 20.8% between April to June during the second quarter. However, from July to September, the numbers have improved, declining 4 points to 16.8%. About 5,000 new jobs were added to the job market in the third quarter of 2017. The increase in hiring was led by the accommodation and food services sectors, which account for 17.8% of employment. The wholesale and retail trade and the auto repairs sectors made up 15.9% of the third quarter job figures. The agriculture and forestry and the construction industries experienced gains of 10.8% and 10.1% respectively. Youth unemployment is also down from 59.8% from April to June to 34.3% during the period July to September. The latest job numbers come on the heels of the annual business performance survey by the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce. In October, the Chamber reported that local businesses recorded better sales figures during the first half of 2017. 65.2% surveyed by the Chamber reported higher earnings compared to 609 in 2016. On the international scene, three people are missing after a U.S. Navy transport plane crashed into the Philippine Sea earlier today. We get the details in this Reuters report. A U.S. Navy transport plane carrying 11 people crashed in the Philippine Sea south of Japan on Wednesday as it flew to the aircraft carrier, the Ronald Reagan. According to the U.S. 7th Fleet, eight people had been rescued and were in good condition, with the remaining three unaccounted for adding that all of the rescued personnel were transferred to the Ronald Reagan for medical evaluation. In a news release, U.S. 7th Fleet said search and rescue efforts for the three missing will continue and the incident will be investigated. Officials say the crash may have been the result of engine trouble. This follows a series of avoidable mishaps at sea by the U.S. Navy. In August, 7th Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Joseph Alcoin was removed from his post after a series of collisions involving his warships in Asia. In June, the USS Fitzgerald almost sank off the coast of Japan after colliding with a Philippine container ship. The bodies of seven U.S. sailors were found inside, and 10 sailors were killed in August after the warship John S. McCain collided with a merchant vessel in waters near Singapore and Malaysia. And finally, the former Bosnian Serb military commander Radko Mladic has been sentenced to life in prison after a U.N. tribunal convicted him today of genocide and crimes against humanity for orchestrating massacres and ethnic cleansing during that country's war. 74-year-old Mladic was hustled out of the court minutes before the verdict for screaming, This is all lies. You are all liars. The U.N. criminal tribunal for the former Yugoslavia found him guilty of 10 of 11 charges, including the slaughter of 8,000 Muslim men and boys at Srebrenica and the siege of the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo. More than 10,000 civilians were killed by shelling and sniper fire in nearly four years. And that's news this afternoon. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Have a good afternoon.